It's a nice mallet. I mean, they actually work. Let's see if I can split wood with it. And I'm not meaning these to be for like woodworking. I want these just to be general purpose, disposable, reusable firewood mounts made from recycled wood. And because uh, do you really need to have a rubber mount? No, you don't really need a rubber mount. It could be anything, it could be wood. So I finally made my first wooden mallet and I'm very pleased with it. It's not finished, the handle is finished, but I'm currently building a belt sander so that I can finish the top. The top is cottonwood because I have all this cottonwood laying around. It's soft, but it's so darn hard to, to chop. It's so difficult to split, even with like 10 wedges in it. It occurred to me like less likely for it to split off the handle. And the, this is just yellow pine, but yellow pine turns so much better than white pine on the lathe. And it's sanded a lot better too. So I think that's definitely gonna work out pretty well. just compression fit like so this top part's still wet so it's still like green or whatever and so I don't want to hammer it down too much but I made it so I whenever it dries out I might be able to go down a lot further and it'll be on there better but for now it's on there pretty good and it, it won't fly off the worst that'll happen is it'll it'll come down and hit your hand now I have the stuff to make another one and I've run into two manufacturing issues, uh, challenges that I'll have to overcome in order for me to mass produce these. So I think that'd be a good way to demonstrate and talk about that while I'm making the second one. So we have the other part of the cottonwood log here and this is the first challenge, just shaping the, the head. I was doing it by hand, but that took 90 minutes to cut because this cotton wood is just terrible wood. So I'm thinking, solution one, cut it with my chainsaw, and then later on I'll just clean it up with the belt sander because I'll need to use that anyway for the corners. And then further solution would be, there's a bandsaw at the scrapyard. I'll buy that bandsaw and I'll restore it, and then I'll, have, I'll be able to cut these by hand. And I'll just use the chainsaw to cut like the big discs of wood about seven inches deep. And then I'll just put that through the bandsaw and get like four or five heads from each round of wood. That'd be pretty easy, I think. But for now, let's go with uh, the chainsaw. Oh, um, design problem number, I guess there's three design problems. I forgot, I need a bigger vise. So I might make something that's, well actually no. I guess I don't need it if I'm going to be doing the, the band saw. That's what that solves. Because it's difficult to fit this into my vise. So yeah, we'll go with the band saw and that will solve that problem. finish this off with this. I don't trust, I don't trust my chainsawing skills indoors. Now what? See, this is where I get into problems with the device not being big enough. It's fucking wood. It does not want to split. But I think my theory for using it does have some foundation in reality.
some nasty wood. Let's see. You know, for this part, I might as well just go ahead and use the chisel for the rest of the way. shit but from what I understand a lot of harder woods oh let's see that I am getting more and more excited for that bandsaw, if it's salvageable. Let's see. goes in the fire and that goes up there fucking split already Not too bad. I think a belt sander would really help clean this up quite a bit. Now this one I'm going to need to be a little smaller. But it looks like I end up being about the same size. Well, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit smaller. Just barely. And the dimension of this is four and a quarter by seven and a half by five. And that might be a good way, uh, and might be, it might be a good dimension for whenever I start manufacturing and selling these. This might be a good like standardized size, I think. Now as for the next issue, the main issue, I think I lucked out on it not having an obvious issue. I wanted to have a drill which could cut a one and three quarter inch hole all the way through this. And so I got the cheapest uh, Forstner bit I could on, on eBay, it was $12. Turns out it was a Vermont American made in Austria from 2004. So that seems pretty good. And then whenever I started cutting, it just, it made this like eight inch spiral cuts. Like, I should almost use this for making like sliced potatoes. That'd be awesome. 
but like I just had all these things now of course whenever it got out they spun around and, and shattered but it cuts so well just right out of the box that it just made perfect cutting and went right through so that was pretty good for the cheapest because it was a little bit of a gamble you didn't know what I didn't know what I was going to get however the issue now is that I will need a Forstner bit extender because I can't go deep enough to go through the hole. So for now, I've been drilling a hole, like a guide hole, and then having to drill this from both sides. Not an ideal solution. Now before I had this all, all clamped down and stuff, but then I got halfway through and then I had to change it, so I ended up just doing it by hand later on. So this will be the continuity hole. It's like mushrooms, like when they're growing on a tree. Okay. It's going a bit off, but you know, because Forstner bits aren't really known for going like centered. Whereas the other one was centered perfectly, this one is not centered perfectly. It's off by a few millimeter. But, I'm going to buy another one of these drill bits because the bits are wonderful. I'm just going to have to make a little extender. And then what I'll do is I'll have that coming down further because the chuck is just too fat to get through the hole. You know, it's funny, if, if I went with a two inch hole, I probably could get the chuck through the hole, but oh well. What I'll do is I'll just start out with that drill the hole, put more blocks underneath it, and so it's higher, and then drill it all the way through, and that should be more than good enough. But for now, that should be good enough. Well, it has to do it, because I'm not cutting another one. Now, if we're cutting the handle, it'd be a lot better for me to just get a circular saw, but this is easier for now, and just for my setup. some bent teeth on here because it's uh at the end it just starts going really bad again circular saw will be good for that but that means I have a wedge shaped piece of wood and so this will just be the top it'll go through the top of the hammer 
Oh, right. I forgot we needed to prepare it for my lathe. This was taken from an off-cutting that was just in the dumpster and it was obviously cut at an angle for something, so gotta square up these edges at least the best I can. And then on this one, I should use the other saw. What else? What else? Good enough. You know, on the other side, I should probably. Little centering piece there. No. No. Why do I even try? Ah, oh, fuck it. Whatever. Oh, before I forget, these are the rollers I'll be using for the belt sander. I am going for a six inch by forty eight inch belt. It'll be plenty big, and I'll have whatever motor running them. But these are from an old 1980s or 1970s foil stamper and they both have bearings in them. So I have three rollers, but I think I might only need, I might only need two of them because that might be a bit too small. So I'll remove that from this plate and I'll put that in there and this can be at the back of the machine or the bottom or whatever and going to the other roller, which I'll custom make to connect to the motor. But I'm still figuring it out and we'll maybe check the scrapyard to see what they have. Because they always have little goodies and stuff. I'll build myself a chuck that actually like clamps down and doesn't just sit there and look dumb. And the tailstock will actually work, you know. All these frivolous things that I wish for. And also one where I can move the, the tool post without breaking my knuckles. Let's start off down here. I might make a pair of calipers. I might make a pair of calipers that I can run on it when it's live. I don't trust those ones. It's not grabbing.
Oh yeah, good amount to still go. that a bit much. Well, I won't do it as much on there. Wait a minute. Yeah, I overdid that a little bit. Might have to make a new handle for this one. But we might be able to salvage it in the very top. afraid of nothing and this this top still has to shrink because it's um very wet because it was just outside in the rain and then this part is totally dry because it's been in my green tarp shed for oh several months oh what's going on? okay there we go Now to clean it up. second mallet handle. I don't think it's too bad. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. At least it feels good in the hand. Now just a matter of getting that belt sander built so I can actually clean up the tops. And uh, among other things, you know, there's all those various things that I need to do. Oops. So there we have it. Two mallets. The first one took 90 minutes to make. The second one took 60 minutes to make. So I'm thinking if I can get better at this and I can work more at this, I can actually get it down to where I can make like 10 an hour. And my goal that I'm working towards is selling these fully finished, not in this quality, but like with the, the, the top will be finished like the handle. And, uh, well, okay, more like the first handle. This handle needs a lot more sanding, but it can't, came out kind of at an angle anyway, so. But I'm aiming for something around this size to be $12. That's my thought, at least. And I'm thinking... I could ship them in a box. Actually, I could. I, it'd be easier to ship two of them. Where I'll have head, head, and then handle, handle, and you'll have two for one, and that'd be like thirty bucks, something like that. Twenty-five bucks, maybe. Yeah, twenty-five bucks for two of them, maybe. We'll have to see how hard it is to actually 
like get all that figured out but seeing as the most the the cheapest wooden mallet online is fifteen dollars and it's a dinky little thing i think that could be pretty good and someday someday what if i could build like a fully autonomous factory that could pump these out for like 25 cents a piece i could disrupt the mallet industry This one's a bit, yeah, the, the front faces aren't exactly uh, straight because I haven't cleaned them up. It's a nice mallet. I mean, they actually work. Ow, fuck. Yeah, it'll be good to straighten up those. Uh, or actually, you know, maybe have one angled and one straight. But it'll be so good for like whenever me and Bill are working on the house, we can just use this to like... Well, it's a persuader, really. Use it, use it to persuade stuff into place, like beams or whatever. Let's see if I can split wood with it. And I'm not meaning these to be for like woodworking. I want these just to be general purpose, disposable, reusable firewood mounts made from recycled wood. And, uh, cause do you really need to have a rubber mount? No, you don't really need a rubber mount. It could be anything. It could be wood. Like if you're, um, if you're struggling with your muffler underneath your car, you have a wooden mount and just beat the shit out of it. Probably a smaller one, but oh well. I might also think of like a, um, a specialized caliper that calibrates for different sizes so I actually have like three or four pieces that I can put against it and like several calipers to show the different sizes. It'd be easier so I could just do it at one thing and uh, that's pretty much it. I want to hear what you guys think about my mallet production schemes and my uh, solutions I've found to problems and solutions I plan to find to problems. And thank you very much for watching. See ya. Oh, my butt's all wet now. Great.